Good morning, everybody. We are so thrilled that you are here, that you made it through the rain to get here this morning. You could have been anywhere else, and you are here at Trinity in Blythewood, and we are so happy to have you with us in worship this morning, worshiping in person, or even if you are worshiping online. We want to celebrate this morning, Little Church, starting back this past Wednesday. We had a fantastic time. We hope that uh, more can come next time. The next one is October 11th, I'm pretty sure. If that's the wrong date, it's the second Wednesday of the month. Please make sure that you read all of the announcements in your bulletin. It also has the people we are praying for and all of the events taking place this week at the church. Thank you for everyone who came to the brunch this morning. I hope you had a fantastic time. For those of you who didn't make it to the brunch, I'm still thrilled you're here and to see you this morning. The cab food drive is still ongoing. You can check our website for a complete list of what they need. You can bring the items by the office or in the bins we have out here. Mark your calendars for Sunday, October 8th. We are doing something very special. We are going to be doing a community-wide prayer service, and we are partnering with the group Faith and Blue. And if you are not familiar with that group, they are an organization that works to build connection between law enforcement officers and neighborhood residents so that everyone feels welcome, safe, and included in their community. So during that prayer service, we will have different members of law enforcement here, but we will also be praying for our community and we hope that you will come and join us. If you have, are like me and you're like, oh, it's flu shot season, I need to get a flu shot, have no fear. If you come here to worship on Sunday, October 15th, we will have a flu shot clinic over in the youth building from 8.45 to 11.45 a.m. Here at Trinity, we are a church that we connect with God and one another so that we might grow into who we are called to be and serve boldly with love and grace. Our opening prayer this morning comes from the song, Speak, O Lord. Let us pray. Speak, O Lord, as we come to you to receive the food of your holy word. Take your truth, plant it deep in us, Shape and fashion us in your likeness, so that the light of Christ might be seen today in our acts of love and our deeds of faith. Speak, O Lord, and fulfill in us all the purposes for your glory. Amen.
morning and welcome. Please join me in the greeting, which we will read responsively. Your part is in bold. Maker of the fields, forests, and streams, your generous goodness comes out to us new every day. By the movement of your spirit over our waters, at our tables, and among our gatherings, help us to acknowledge your goodness, give thanks for your gifts, extend our table to a stranger, and care for the land and water we share on this good earth. Through Jesus Christ, the fruitful vine, our living water, and our bread of life. Please be seated. Please join me now for the prayer for illumination, which is found in your bulletin or on the screen. Almighty God, in you are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Open our eyes that we may see the wonders of your word and give us grace that we may clearly understand and freely choose the way of your wisdom. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Old Testament reading this morning is Psalm 103, verses 1 through 14. We will read this responsively once again. Your part will be in bold. It's printed in your bulletin or on the screen. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all God's benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good as long as you live, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord, who works vindication and justice for all who are oppressed, has made known God's way to Moses, God's acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord will not always chide nor harbor anger for us. The Lord does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is the Lord's steadfast love toward the faithful. As far as the east is from the west, so far does the Lord remove our transgressions from us. As a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to the faithful. For the Lord knows our fame and remembers that we are dust. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading, hearing, and living of these words.
I can have the children come up with me. Hello, friends. Sorry to you all, you're not gonna be able to see it because we have a baptism today, which is a huge blessing. But I've got two baskets here, okay? In this first basket, I have candy. I'm gonna lay this candy out, okay? There are 10 pieces, y'all can count them with me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, it'd be really fun to get all this candy, right? What if I was going to give you ten, each of you, ten pieces of candy? Be pretty cool, right? Well, yes, you're doing division, which is awesome. <laughs> but let's say, hold on, for this example, I'm going to give each of you ten pieces of candy. That'd be pretty cool, right? It'd be a gift that I'm giving to you because you didn't do anything to deserve candy, right? Nope. And candy's not all that great for us. But God gives us everything, anything you can think of, your mom, your dad, your grandparents, your brothers, sisters, your house, your pets, everything God gives us, right? So let's say I was going to give you all 10 pieces of candy. But I said, I need you to give me one of those pieces back so that I can share it with other people. Does that seem like a big request? If I'm just like, I just, I just need this so I can help some other people. That's still a lot of candy, right? And it'd still be a pretty good gift to get. So, do you know that God asks us to give 10% back of what he gives us? Now, we can't give our dogs back, right? Like, that would be weird. And we can't give our pillows back, right? We can't really do that. But what we can give is what we have. And what you, do you all have? Can you sing? Can you come to church? Yeah. Um, maybe when you get money for your birthday, you could give a little bit of that money to the church. Because God asks that us just give 10%, this is just 10% of all the candy I have there, right? And he asks, will you just give that back to me so I can help other people? And you, it's a gift we give back to God because he asks us to. Pretty simple, right? And we all have gifts. You might think, Miss Bonnie, I do not have a gift to give right now. But everybody has a gift. And we have someone in our church who has the gift of sewing. And they have made these pillows. And as a gift, she wants to give one to you if you want one, okay? You can take one home and you can remember that God gives us everything we have, right? We didn't earn this pillow, right? You didn't do anything to get this pillow, but it was a gift from someone that wanted to say, we love you and we love that you're coming to church. And if you want a pillow, you can take one home, okay? So I want you to, when you look at this, and it's got a little prayer on it when you're praying at night, to remember that there are gifts that we all have. Her gift is sewing. My gift is talking. <laughs> That's why I can sit up here and do this so long. Um, but we all have gifts. Each one of you has a gift. And you can use that gift for God. And you can give back to God from what he gives us. Sound good? Let's pray. Thank you, God. For your love, help us share your love. Amen. Okay, let's go to Children's Church and I'll hand all these goodies out. You help me put them up? Thank you. There we go. You care it for me? Awesome. Well, good morning. It is good to see you today. Now, we didn't get any pieces of candy. I don't know how that works. 
They, I know. Hey, y'all had a good time. I saw. I got to see a lot of you over across the way. It was good to see y'all as we were welcoming Mijin, as we were having fellowship with one another. It's just good for us to come together as the church, right? It's just good to be be together. Um, we got a special day in the church today as we have a baptism. See, he's already ready for it today. All right? He's getting ready. It's going to be great. Um, and uh, so you, you hear this now, and you watch what happens when God works, right? Now, I'm, I'm just saying that because I've had him go all over the place. Uh, this is going to be good, though. Everything is going to be great. Um, well, so we're continuing our sermon series on the power of commitment. And uh, we've looked two weeks ago at the commitment of prayer. Right? We looked at prayer as the cornerstone of our discipleship in the way of Jesus. It is our communication with God. It's the way we communicate with him and he communicates with us. We talked that there's a purpose and a practice. So that purpose is for that communication with God, but n- nobody else is just us and God. And we're, we're not going to do that as the practice in front of others to just give us the glory. We may practice, we will practice prayer in public because we will do that in just a little while, right? We did that at the beginning when Mijin had a prayer before we began worship. But all of that is focused this way towards the cross, right? And it's focused this way to God, Which is why, of course, you got the cross in the way the sanctuary is made, right? And right at the intersection is the baptismal font. We're going to talk about that in a minute because I've got another way for us to look at this. Last week, we talked about presence, being present with one another. We, we're present with one another in worship. We're present with one another in our small groups, all the ways that we come together, any ways that you come together, that you're present with one another. We are present here today to worship God, not to worry about anything else, even though our minds are going 1,000 miles a minute. I will tell you, my mind is going a thousand miles a minute. I'm thinking about things as I'm saying, and I'm putting things together, just like you are. And so it's a wonder sometimes words come out of my mouth in the right order, but they do, right? Because that's one of the gifts that God has given me, which is what we're going to talk about today, the commitment of gifts, right? What we do uh, with our money with our talents, but specifically, we are going to talk about money today. John Wesley, the founder of Methodism, believed that discipleship and our financial responsibility go hand in hand. You earn all you can, you save all you can, you give all you can. Plain and simple as that. And the whole idea is that we we just earn what we can and we save it, and we give it. At the end, I'll give us something practical that we can do together, or you can do, maybe you're already doing, to make that uh, a reality. We give back to God because he gave first. He gave his son for us. So it's our responsibility. It's our opportunity to give back to God. There's no pressure. No one's going to pressure you into doing that. But that is the opportunity that we have to be able to do that. Because if we're going to practice a Christ-centered life, we need to be able to practice these commitments of prayer and presence and the idea of gifts or generosity. A biblical understanding of this relationship between our money and our faith comes through Scripture, right? Jesus gave his all as well. So why can't we just a little tiny bit? You know, so that was a good example of candy. Ten pieces if you give one back for somebody else. I mean, that's easy to see. And that's really how easy it is. But our lives are complicated, aren't they? (laughs) They are very complicated. And sometimes we make it more complicated than it needs to be. But I understand because we all have things that we are living and dealing with. But let's go to the scriptures and see what they say. We're going to look at what Paul says about money. We're going to look in 2 Corinthians 9, verses 1 through 15. Hear these words. Now it is not necessary for me to write you about the ministry to the saints, for I know your eagerness, which is the subject of my boasting about you to the people of Macedonia, saying that Achaia has been ready since last year, and your zeal has stirred up most of them. 
But I'm sending the brothers in order that our boasting about you may not prove to have been empty in this case, so that you may be ready, as I said you would be. Otherwise, if some Macedonians come with me and find that you are not ready, we will be humiliated to say nothing of you in this undertaking. So I thought it necessary to urge the brothers to go on ahead to you and arrange in advance for this bountiful gift that you have promised, so that it may be ready as a voluntary gift and not as an extortion. The point is this, the one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and the one who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each of you must give as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance, so that by always having enough of everything, you may share abundantly in every good work. As it is written, he scatters abroad, he gives to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way for your great generosity, which will produce thanksgiving to God through us. For the rendering of this ministry not only supplies the needs of the saints, but also overflows with many thanksgivings to God. Through the testing of this ministry, you glorify God by your obedience to the confession of the gospel of Christ and by the generosity of your sharing with them and with all others, while they long for you and pray for you because of the surpassing grace of God that he has given you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So on the surface, on the surface, Paul is talking about money. He's talking about money, and he's talking to a community, the Corinthians, right? Um, it's, a bit, it's a big issue for them. It's a big issue for us today. And so we talk about those things. When I talked about John Wesley earlier, he also believed that the, the, the love of money is the root of evil, not the money itself, right? Sometimes it's just not the money, but it's the love of money. You know, if we had that basket up here and there were a thousand baskets of, of candy up there and one person was going to go after all those, that candy, they may have a problem, right? right? The love of that is too much and excess. That's just not good. But, but it, having money itself is not the problem. That's, that's not the issue here. Because if you have seeds, as he uses the seed and the sower, it's okay to have a bunch of seeds. What do you do with them? You cast them. You cast them out. So Paul wrote, wrote this letter because he was concerned that the Corinthians were, had made a promise to do the right thing. They completed a collection for the church in Judea, and they were going to give that away. And they, had, they said that they were going to do that. It was a commitment. So they were going to live in to their commitment. We as a church are committed to many things. When we ourselves and you in your history at Trinity here have committed to build something, you're committed to build it, and then you're committed to pay for it. We need to make the, our commitment true. Our word is our bond. We are going to do those things. That's what God expects. And that's what Paul expects. He's expecting that to happen for this church in Corinthians. But I want to take away from some of that and look at the two guidelines and two benefits of giving that Paul outlines for us. He outlines it for the church at Corinth, but he outlines this for us. And this is where I want us to begin to think. The first guideline, give generously. You give generously. If you have it, and can do it, you give, right? And giving generously has nothing to do with the amount, right? Because we all could give different amounts, but it's the giving, and you do it out of what you have, the abundance. Right? I, I know our 21st century minds are, you know, going crazy. Oh, I got all these bills to pay, but let's just for a moment, just think if you had 10 pieces of candy and you gave generously and, and you said, here, here's a one. I mean, we've won to somebody else. Right? It's an easy way to see that. Right? The second way that we do this, the, really the kind of the, the second guideline, is to give cheerfully. You do it because you want to give and you're happy to give. You, you, you know, if, if you're going to receive a gift, if I'm going to give this gift, I'm not going to go up like this and try to hand somebody something. And you're not going to receive it if your hands are closed either, Right? But if you're going to give generously and abundantly, you're going to open it up, right? You're going to give. 
So if you're planting and you're, and you're, and you're just casting, you're not going to go and you'll be there all day. <laughs> and the machines nowadays do all that for you, right? They can, you know, the track, they can do all that for you. And they, and, but you do, you do a bunch, right? Because what happens for every one seed, the production that comes from that could be a hundredfold. So we give cheerfully, right? Now, however much we choose to give is only our business, right? It's what we decide that's between us and God. This can work with our, our talents. We may give of our talents and of ourselves. We need to be able to give generously, and we need to be able to give cheerfully. So if we want to serve and we want to volunteer, we do it in the exact same way. I'm going to give of my time. You're going to stick your toe in, so no, just go ahead and, and give. I'm going to give. I'm going to block this time to give. And I'm going to do it for what? Others will benefit from that along with yourself. Right? But it's, it, you think it's enough to give generously, but it, it's really not, right? This, the whole idea of being cheerful, right? And that doesn't mean that you, cheerful that you got to be really happy about it. But it doesn't mean you got to be sad either, right? I'm not saying that. But cheerful doesn't necessarily, right, you just got to have that spirit of giving. Because you may be making a decision when you look at your budget and go, wow, I don't know. I'm going to give cheerfully. But how am I going to make it through this, right? How am I going to make it through this? There are two ways to fail at giving, Paul recognizes. If you give generously but not joyfully, you're giving in the wrong way. And if you're joyful but not generous, then you failed altogether. Now, all of us worldly minds in the room, that are going, man, this sounds countercultural. Well, it is, but this is God's economy. And we turn it upside down and go, oh, this is what God's calling us to do. It's not what we would necessarily do in the world, right? Some of it might be, but a lot of it's not. A lot of it, we, do, we just think that that's just, that doesn't make sense. Why would we do it that way? But how many of you have received benefits back from what you've given? I'm not going to ask for any show of hands, but over half of you in here have given things in the past and you will realize somewhere down the road that it's come back to you at a time when you needed it the most, right? I mean, that's true. I mean, I've experienced it multiple times in my life. We may not want to do, but when we do, God comes back and he blesses us. So God wants us to be at the intersection of generosity and joy. Right, so when I come back, at the intersection of generosity and joy. Right, here we are, intersection. Right, so that we give generously and we're joyful as we do it. We worship generously and we're joyful when we do it. We pray and our presence, next week we'll talk about serve. It works the same way. So think about that. That's the, what we do. But there are benefits to giving as well. God will give you what you need to continue to be generous. Again, God will give us what we need in the time that we need it. Now, there are many seasons of life that we're in. You may not be in a season of life where the idea of being able to do what you used to do can work but be generous in the season you're in. Remember, it's between you and God. It's not what your neighbor wants you to do or you think your neighbor's doing. Because what you think your neighbor's doing isn't your business. It needs to be just you. This is what I'm going to do for God. This is what I want to do. Because God blesses generous givers. Time and time again, that happens. Why is the church still here after all these thousands of years? All right. How did the church make it through COVID when all these businesses closed down? Right? There's a reason. You could have closed down because of money, but the church did not. Right? But God does this, tells us to do this. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase all the harvest. We'll give you abundantly. Right? You plant a tomato plant and everything goes well, right? You're going to get more than one tomato off. Now, you may get one, but you're probably going to get more. 
The little bit of work you did there comes back abundantly. And then you may plant multiple plants, and then you get more tomatoes. Next thing you know, you're making salsa, you're making spaghetti sauce, and then you're sharing that with someone else. And how many people benefit from that? Which is another benefit, that God will use your gifts to bless others. This is seen, I think a great way to see this is through education, right? A teacher and one child. The, the time and energy given to the one child will bless millions of people over the lifetime, right? It'll multiply so great because what that child learns will then share it and learn and grow and build and grow. So when we give, we're actually giving for our neighbors in this room. Right? The benefit and beyond in our community and new churches and missionaries and missions all over the world. United Methodist Church is a global church. What we give now will help all folks all over the world. We have an impact that we can change the world. It doesn't look that way. But in God's economy, we can do that. We have the possibilities to do that. And it's one person and one gift at a time. You just slowly do that. It'll supply the needs of the saints, those folks who are really in the trenches doing, you know, uh, alcohol and abuse work, gun violence work, you know, our law enforcement, which we're going to do our prayer service in a couple of uh, Sundays to recognize and partner in with what, especially our Richland County Sheriff's Department, because we don't have a local police in Blythewood, but we depend on our deputies both men and women, to protect, but they serve. And we need to be able to recognize them and pray over them. Because how many times do we just, we just don't give it much thought? But the work that they do is important. The work that you do is important. The work that we do as the church has an impact it's easy for us to get wrapped up in all the, the doings of the church, but when it gets right down to it, to the scriptures, we ourselves have great power that God's given us. We get to choose, and we can make a big difference in one person's life. It's just one. Just one. A little while, we're going to see a difference that the church makes in one child. And family's life. It'll actually be our family too. It's God's family. Right? It's just going to be one at a time, right? Just one. But one can make a huge, huge difference. It'll bring us closer to others when we give of ourselves. Right? When we hold back and we think that we're trying to punish, only the person holding back is the one who gets hurt. Right? It's like forgiveness. I'm not going to forgive them. Because, well, Guess what? You're not forgiving for the other person. You're forgiving for yourself. And when you do and you let that go, it opens you up to a whole new world. When we say, I'm not going to give because I'm not going to do this. Guess what? You only hurt yourself. You don't hurt the whole because the whole is going to keep going. Right? It's going to keep going and we're going to keep moving and you're going to keep moving and the world keeps moving. But we have to put it in a, in a place with, a, with the right generosity and the right cheerfulness. So that God can use it in a way that is powerful. The benefit of giving is clear. Individuals and families and churches can have this whole idea of a, a lifestyle and disciplined spending and generosity. We need to be globally minded to not think just inside. If we're only giving inside, it's a club. But if we're looking at it as a broad, we can be the church. I'm very clear. I give more than 10%, me and Jan do. Right? So I'm going to tell you right up front. I'm not ashamed of that. Right? So I'm going to tell you, I'm going to put my money where my mouth is, but it's none of your business. And it's none of my business what you give. But I want you to know that that's what we do. Because we're committed to God and Christ. Right? That's, what we, that's what God's teaching us. Through our prayers, through our presence, and through our gifts. In a little while during this service with baptism and uh, joining of members, we're going to say those words out loud. And you're going to commit 
in front of everyone in God at the intersection of generosity and joy that you're going to live faithfully by these ways. I'm telling you, when you do, there are great things that happen, right? We can all disagree on how it might need to be spent, but if we give, the answers will come to us. I'm telling you, the answers will come. It opens up. It is a, is a great thing for us to hear. It's a great thing for us to see. Next Sunday, we're going to talk about the commitment of service. And uh, service is a perfect follow to gifts. Because gifts was a perfect follow to presence. Because when you give, you are present with what it is you're giving to. You know what you're giving to, right? You look at your checkbook and go, I'm giving to this, right? You're very present. We'll talk about service. And next week, we're going to talk and have someone talk to us about an opportunity that we ourselves might be involved in at Trinity, where our service will come through gifts and prayers and presence to help others, thousands, millions of people with things. And I'll let that happen next week, and you'll, you'll understand when it comes together. One of our Sunday school classes, the the Hitchhikers, they've partnered with Epworth Children's Home, and they've done a, a great thing of service where they've gone into an old prayer garden next to the chapel at Epworth Children's Home, and it was dilapidated. You didn't even know it was a prayer garden. It just like, looked like a bunch of old wood and plants and weeds, and it has been rebirthed into a beautiful prayer garden with nice three wooden crosses up on top of this. They were all dilapidated. They gave up their time and their talents and their gifts. They're going to do some other work with Epworth over time, and we ourselves are going to do good work. We raised almost over $1,000 for Epworth last Sunday. That's wonderful because that's giving of ourselves for somebody else. For these children don't have the opportunities that you and I have. Well, they do through Epworth, but otherwise they'd be out on the street. And today's weather would not be a nice place to sleep in, would it? It wouldn't. So we'll have opportunities to serve, and we'll talk about that next week. So something practical. I, I, I put this in my holy smoke moment this week, uh, last Sunday, about the 10-10-80 principle, where you, you, you take 10% of your money and you give 10% to God, right? You give 10%. It's always easy when you can't see it, right? So like you're, you know, when you work, and they take out all your, your savings and your health and your tax and all you can't see, right? You can see the number, but you never see it or feel it because you've learned to live around that. Come do the same thing. Let's take 10 and say, boom, take five, whatever. This is, this is ideal. And then you take the next 10 and you save it. All you, all you folks under 20 in the room that are here, man, we, listen, listen to your parents. And, and the, we, there's opportunity to save now. It'll benefit you down the road, right, adults? I mean, it's going to be true. Because what we have now, you know, now you're going to think this is just some old guy up here telling you this. But the reality is it's going to be much more expensive when you're my age than where it is now. But you're going to be able to do it. And we as the church can help you do that. And then the 80% you live on, 10, 10, 80. 10 to give to God, 10 to save, 10, 80 to live on. That's ideal. Some of you are well beyond that. Some of you can't even get there. But that's okay. Just try. Put it in your mind and say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. I'm going to do this for, for six months, and I'm going to see what God can do in my life. Do it because you're giving to God, not because Pastor Scott said it. Right. Just, just, just try it and watch, watch how God blesses us. So those seeds that were cast out, all those hundreds and hundreds and thousands of seeds that are cast out, we know that somewhere they're going to grow. Why? Because God's blessing rains down on them. Right? It's raining down. Right? It's raining. That is rain you're hearing, by the way. That's why I'm saying that. It's raining down. That's what happens. We didn't ask the rain to come. We want to dodge the rain. We want to get out of the rain. 
But man, receive God's blessing today. Let's pray. Oh God, we are thankful for this opportunity to gather as the church to be your people. We come from all walks of life. Our road to Trinity has been long and winding. Some of us have attended for years and others are just peeking their head in and coming in and seeing how God is moving throughout this place. Lord, we, we do the best we can. We know we can do better. We, we know we are committing to our prayers and our presence and our gifts as far as we've gotten. We know we will commit more in just a little while. That if we can just step back and see the wonderful things that you do, the smiles, the tears, the things that are really important, the ways that you nourish us through your word, the ways that we sit with our brothers and sisters in this place to worship you, but when we're done, we get to share a word, a handshake, just a smile that could brighten someone's day, that could lead them to, to do something that really could change the world. Lord, we pray for those who are hungry and homeless and hopeless today, for those around the world who are suffering and dealing with natural disasters, for those disasters that we ourselves bring on ourselves through war and poverty, for those who are dealing with abuse and gun violence, those who are just at a place that they're stuck. Lord, that might be us. We pray, oh God, that you will pull us up. Give us a hand up, not a hand out. Allow us to be the hands and feet of Christ to help others give a hand up and not a hand out. Allow us to teach and to, to, to provide for those who are in need. Lord, give us the wisdom to know what to do and when to do it. For this day, we give you great thanks for this time and this special moment that we will all share together. We ask all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. It's now our opportunity to get to share in a, a moment of the church that is so important. It's one of the two sacraments, holy baptism. I'll have the family come forward at this time uh, as we prepare our hearts and minds to, to be witness to, to participate in, and to welcome one into the family of God. Interesting that it's raining outside. As the rains come down, the water is important uh, as a symbol, right? Our body is made up mostly of water. The earth is made up mostly of water. And so it is why water is what we use in these moments. I bring before you Richard and Bethany Scardeville and their son. They are standing before you, and this is some of their family that has come to, to bear witness to this moment. Uh, and it's going to be a, a good and faithful moment for them. I'll ask if you'll turn in your hymnal to page 33, and then we'll go through the next couple of pages together. It's going to be all right. I told y'all it's going to be all right now, right? I told you that. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given the promise of new birth through water and the spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. Now, Richard and Bethany are, 
are coming to us as transfer from Vincent United Methodist Church in Nutley, New Jersey. So they're going to be joining the church as well as their son will be baptized. So the words and things that they're saying, they're saying for them, and they're also saying on behalf of Noah. It'll be okay. It'll be okay. All right. And I'm going to call Richard Rich because that's what he goes. I'm going to call him Rich. So Rich and Bethany, on behalf of you and your son, on behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If so, say, I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If so, say, I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior? Put your whole trust in his grace and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races. If so, say, I do. So this will be on behalf of your son. Will you nurture this child in Christ's holy church that by your teaching and example, he may be guided to accept God's grace for himself, to profess his faith openly, and to lead a Christian life? If so, say, I will. All right, congregation, on page 35, I ask you this question. Do you, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include these persons now before you in your care? Let us join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of the Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the body. Water. Ah, see, it's important, right? It's a symbol of what God has and will do. It's a uniting factor in peace because we're all created and we all have water within us, within the world. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. We, we, you, you're going in in a minute. <laughs> Page 36 will continue. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos and swept across the dark waters and brought forth light, the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and this child who will receive it to wash away his sin to clothe him in righteousness throughout his life, that dying and being raised with Christ, he may share in his final victory.
what name shall you give this child? Noah Richard Scardaville. All right. Noah Richard Scardaville, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. May God bless you and keep you. Okay. All right. I know that that was a lot of water. That was a little bit more than I wanted to do. Look at Pastor Meejin right here. Hey, how about, how, how about we go see your friends? How about we go see some friends? Well, you, you come walk with me. Yeah, because you, you had the magic touch. I'll, I'll hold them, but you come walk. How about that? All right, come on. Oh, you hear the music? Say hello, everybody. Oh, things that we need to, to do here. We need to make sure that Rich and Bethany, as they come as members of this church, I'm going to ask you, as members of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and witness? If so, say, I will. Congregation on page 38. Members of the household of God, I commend these persons to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace and peace. So let's welcome Noah as now a child of God, and then Rich and Bethany Scardaville, we welcome y'all. That, God bless you, okay? that, that, wasn't, that wasn't as bad as you thought it was. That was bad.
got a few gifts that we want to, to present. There's a quilt. We've got a uh, chrismon. So this is the first chrismon that we're actually giving. Uh, they made some chrismon. So this is the first. Noah is the first to receive one of these from Trinity. And then the baptismal certificate. And you'll also have the candle that we'll make sure that we give to you as well. So if you see them, welcome them. You've seen uh, Rich and Bethany and Noah around, but now you know more about them. And uh, welcome them again to Trinity uh, when you do see them. Thank you all. All right, Noah. He's the man that put all that water on me. All right. Thank you. Thank you. So those are great, right? Because you just really never know how it's all going to work, right? <laughs> right? And, and, and just the fluidity of it and organic nature of how it happens, you know, because we don't understand what baptism, we don't understand how all this really comes together because God has just told us, you do these things and you do it, you bless the water, it's like communion, you, you know, how it becomes the body and blood of Christ, it's a mystery to us. And, and, and the baptism is a mystery to us, but we do know that God has blessed and will continue to bless us. So now is our opportunity to give back to God by our presentation of our tithes and offerings.
Oh God, for these blessings we give back to you, we pray that you will multiply them in our presence so our hearts might be filled with your spirit now and forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn is Take My Life and Let It Be, 399, and it'll also appear on the screen. opportunity to meet at the intersection of generosity and joy. Today we have met there. We have heard the the words to be generous, to be joyful. We have witnessed and been witnesses to the baptism of Noah Richard Scardaville. Now go in peace to love and serve our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ this day and always. Amen.